New Zealand is a beautiful country, but it does have a dark side. It has many unmapped caves, and even some of the mapped ones are not always fully explored. We don't really know how deep they go. In today's video, I cover one of the most horrifying cave stories gone wrong that happened this past May 2023. Now let's get into it. The Abbey Caves are a popular spot for walking and recreation, featuring three significant caves, Organ, Middle and Ivy. They're about a 10 minute drive from central Whangarei. Outside the caves, a clear warning. Have an emergency plan in place. He was pinned against the rocks and he did his absolute best, you know. He was, he was underwater. He got dragged out in the end because he was, he was underwater for as long as he could handle it. Nestled in the heart of Whangarei, New Zealand, lies a trio of caves that promise an experience unlike any other. The Abbey Caves are an intricate system of limestone formations that have captivated the hearts of adventurers for years. Bill Round, a seasoned caver, describes these caves as a delightful mesh of passages that most can traverse with ease on a good day. You will come across shallow pools that hardly touch your knees as you walk through. The Oregon, Middle, and Ivy are the names of these passages which the stream that runs through them naturally sculpted. Each one offers a unique exploration experience, making it a must visit for those looking for an adrenaline rush. The Fongare District Council, on their official website, paints a vivid picture of these caves, emphasizing the dramatic limestone outcrops and the mesmerizing sinkholes. However, they also advise caution, especially during unpredictable weather, as the area is susceptible to flash floods. The District Council information page suggests checking the weather forecast, noting that the caves can be prone to flash flooding. The Oregon Cave in particular demands a bit more care due to the roof of the cave previously collapsing. Nicholas Canup, a Fungary District Councillor, recalls his own adventures into the depths of these caves. Having ventured in over 10 times, he describes the caves as an untouched paradise, where you truly feel one with nature. The thrill lies in navigating the caves without guided pathways, clambering over the rocks, and occasionally slipping into pockets. Nicholas's tales from inside the cave evokes a sense of challenge and wonder, highlighting the spaces that test one's agility and dexterity. However, he emphasizes the importance of safety, advising against visiting during rainy forecasts. Water levels can rise dramatically, even reaching chest high in places. While he acknowledges certain areas he wouldn't venture into, he insists that the overall experience is pretty magical for anyone who has a zest for adventure. In the dark heart of Northland, New Zealand, nestled a mere 22 miles from Abbey Caves, lies a formidable subterranean labyrinth known as the Waipu Caves. This vast system, one of the largest limestone crashed cave formations in Northland, has been the site of unforgettable experiences for some and chilling nightmare episodes for others. Rewind to September 21st, 2007, a year stained in Shenna Lintern's memory as the time when her daughter, along with five other Northcote college students, experienced a terrifying ordeal inside the depths of these caves. The students were part of the Project K North Shore, a youth development program in the company of three instructors and two guides from a local business called Peak Adventures. Founded by New Zealanders Graham Dingle and Joanne Wilkinson in 1995, Project K instills confidence and resilience in young teenagers through experiences in nature. The group, along with their instructors, ventured into the cavernous maze despite ominous signs of bad weather looming. Constant monitoring of the weather in the lead up to trips is critical. Ian Fox says years can go by between caving accidents, but when something goes wrong, it's crucial to have highly skilled crew on hand. Then disaster struck. A flash flood, triggered by torrential rain, barricaded their way out of the labyrinth, trapping them just a mere 10 feet from the cave's main entrance. Ian Fox was director of the company that took the students into the cave back then. His business partner was trapped with them. He told me it was like a wall of water, maybe half a metre high, coming down the passage rapidly. In a desperate, harrowing escape, the trapped teenagers and their instructors had no option but to navigate their way through the swirling, rising waters, submerged in darkness, to get to safety on the other side. 
A similar sized group had managed to exit moments before, their instructor sounding the alarm when their second group did not follow soon after. In 2007, a sudden downpour flooded the entrance, leaving half the group trapped. Three News reporter Bob McNeil was even pulled in to help. Some of them had to hold on to a rope and be towed underwater before popping out to safety. Then, like a scene straight from a thriller, a clock was ticking against them. A rising torrent was on the brink of engulfing the semi-submerged group when the fire engine pump, which had been holding the water at bay and from getting to them, couldn't withstand the pressure any longer. It was a race against time under the burden of an unforgiving rain to save the trapped teenagers. The local community sprung into action. Around 60 police, rescue, and fire personnel came to the site, braving the inclement weather to embark on the relentless rescue mission. At the height of the operation, a distress call from the cave mouth declared the situation critical. But these were no ordinary teenagers. Displaying astounding bravery and resilience, the last student plunged underwater through the chilling, swirling darkness, escaping the clutches of the cave's jaw. The instructor embodying true leadership, ensuring the safety of every student. The clock struck 8.30 p.m. when the ordeal was over, and the survivors, two adults and seven teenagers, were whisked away to the Fungare Hospital. In 2007, a group of high school students rescued from a caving system in Northland. They retreated for mild hypothermia before being discharged. Senior Sergeant Cliff Metcalf, the Northland search and rescue boss, commended the courage of the students and the seamless coordination of the rescue teams, including crews from five brigades, police search and rescue personnel, and a specialist cave rescue squad. Shanna Lintern felt little had changed since her daughter's ordeal, that lessons from the past had been forgotten. The harrowing events of 2007 reverberated through her words, in 2007, they knew there was bad incoming weather, and they still went ahead anyway. New Zealand's Speleological Society safety officer, Kit Mendano, echoed Shana's sentiments, stressing the importance of vigilance about weather conditions and seeking local expertise before venturing into a cave system. A simple oversight can transform an adventure into a nightmare. Unfortunately, something much worse would happen in a future caving trip that took place on May 8, 2023. A group of 15 students from the Fungaria Boys High School prepared for an upcoming excursion to the Abbey Caves. The mysterious allure of these vast wonders promised an unforgettable journey. Although there was a sense of anticipation for the discovery, danger was beginning to loom. Scotty Booth, a concerned parent and an experienced helicopter pilot, voiced his apprehensions about the expedition. As he attempted to liaise the school regarding the potential risks, his inquiries fell on silent ears. Left with no alternative, he chose to withdraw his son from the expedition. Sheer frustration over the fact the school greenlit the trip in the first place. Complete disbelief and shock, to be fair. Um, that, yeah, that they'd gone ahead and, and done what they'd done. Scotty Booth's son was signed up to the same school outdoor activities group that Carnan was in. On Friday, the school wrote to parents saying, due to the rain forecasted for next week, we've had to modify the planned trips. Initially, we had rock climbing scheduled. This has been changed to caving. A few days later, and with the weather forecast unchanged, Booth made a potentially life-saving call. And I said, well, he's not going. I said, regardless of, of what the school says, I'm not going to let him go. End of story. Booth's family wrote to the school saying, are you still heading to Abbey Caves tomorrow with the weather forecasted? But there was no response. And then came the news he'd been dreading all along. And she said, don't get angry, don't get upset, but look what's happened here. I'm like, oh, everything we thought would happen. Scotty's familiarity with danger, honed by three years of piloting, resonated with an ominous warning. There's no good reason to go into a cave during heavy rain, he said, adding the school should have known better. Further adding to the concern, the Fungare Boys High School website revealed similar trips for other groups planned for the next few days. This brought into sharp focus the necessity for prudent decision making, especially when dealing with unpredictable natural phenomenon like the Abbey Caves. 
as the incident in this story sent a ripple through the community, the impending question remains. How do we strike a delicate balance between thrilling exploration and the safeguarding of young lives against the unpredictable might of nature? A call for adventure to blend seamlessly with the call for safety. On an ordinary morning, brimming with the promise of a new day, a spirited group of 15 students and two teachers from the Fungare Boys High School embarked on what was supposed to be a thrilling excursion into the local cave system called the Abbey Caves. Upon their arrival at the caves, the students were greeted by a large sign delineating the perilous conditions that could arise due to sudden floodwaters. As if echoing Nicholas Booth's concerns, it cautioned about the caves filling rapidly with water, transforming into a waist-deep pool, even for adults. The Ivy Cave in particular was flagged for its vulnerability to flooding. According to a former Abbey Caves tour guide, a mere 2-3 millimeters of rain could provoke a catastrophic flash flood, prompting immediate cancellation of expeditions. The forecast for the day of the excursion was far from reassuring. Met Service, New Zealand's weather service, had issued a heavy rain warning, forecasting an alarming 90 millimeters of rain. Yet, the excursion proceeded as planned. Despite the warning signs and unfavorable forecasts, the group embarked on their adventure. The Northland region, already under a weather alert, began experiencing light rainfall since the early hours of Monday gradually escalating to a drenching 33 millimeters of rainfall between 10 and 11 a.m. In anticipation of such situations, safety measures had been outlined. The risk assessment acknowledged potential dangers including drowning, hypothermia, disorientation, and fatigue, and underscored preventative steps. These included verifying swimming competency among students, placing non-swimmers near trip leaders, and maintaining a manageable walking pace. Protocols for lost group members were also outlined. Moreover, the school ensured students were equipped with safety gear, helmets, waterproof lights, caving overalls, and special boots, indicative of the seriousness of the journey. The plan was sound on paper, yet the execution fell short in the face of nature's wrath. As the group of students and teachers stood at the cave's entrance, the ensemble of rocks and boulders seemed to challenge their every step. At first glance, the terrain appeared daunting. However, with each careful step, what once seemed insurmountable became a series of stepping stones, guiding them deeper into the cave's tunnels. After navigating a few more boulders, the path beneath their feet gradually became more inviting. A chilly surprise of water welcomed them, brushing against their ankles, drawing them deeper into the cave. And then they saw them, the ethereal glowworms, resembling a celestial tapestry brought down to earth. They adorned the cave walls and ceilings, illuminating their path. These things were really cool, something that they were expecting to see, but had no idea how beautiful the site was actually going to be. Moving further in, they decided to switch off their flashlights, allowing the raw beauty of the cave to surround them. There were no guides, no distractions, just the students and the teachers in the cave's natural wonders. Around 70 meters in, the water began its ascent. From the gentle touches at their ankles, it rose to embrace their knees and waists. Yet, the beckoning of the deeper parts of the cave remained irresistible. The passages transformed, taking on the semblance of echoing canyons and the ever-present glowworms illuminating their way. One student saw a waterfall within the cave and ventured towards it. The thought of climbing it tugged at her adventurous spirit. But, in the echoing silence of solitude, she hesitated. Weighing the risks and rewards, she decided to choose the path of caution. As some students were watching her, other students began to venture further into the cave, and the atmosphere started to change. The comforting embrace of the earth began to feel claustrophobic. The rhythmic pulse of the cave seemed to synchronize with a haunting, almost prophetic rhythm. What was once an environment illuminated by the playful beams of their flashlights became a world where these very lights served as their last beacon against an encroaching, palpable darkness. The turning point of their expedition came when they were deep into the cave's core. At the midst of their journey, they heard something horrifying coming from deeper within the cave. 
the distant rumble of water. The gentle murmur, initially dismissed as nature's background music, slowly turned into a crescendo. In a matter of moments, the caves were flooded with an unrelenting deluge. Those trapped inside could only compare the experience to being ensnared by the cave itself. The ever-increasing water level created an atmosphere of sheer terror. The students grappled with the rising torrent, searching for higher ground. The sensation of the cold water, rising with a ruthless speed, felt like nature's own way of rebelling against these young intruders. During this crisis, the beacon of hope for these students was their teacher. Armed with nothing but sheer determination, he fought the surging currents to save as many students as he could. The gallant effort, especially for five boys trapped under a ledge, would later be recounted with tears from the rescuers. However, his heroics came at a price. The unforgiving water and jagged cave walls did not distinguish between student and savior. Outside, the world was oblivious to the tragedy unfolding below. Rain continued to pour, adding to the rising water levels in the cave. Anxious parents, faces pale with fear, awaited any news of their children. The decision by authorities to withhold information in a bid to maintain order only fueled the flames of anxiety and despair. Caleb Salisbury, an arborist by profession, emerged as the unexpected hero. As the fear-ridden day turned into night, a missing year 11 student remained at the heart of everyone's thoughts. The student was Karnan Patera. The main charge will be failing to take reasonably practical steps to ensure the health and safety of teachers, uh, workers and other persons, the children. If um, ultimately the Board of Trustees were found liable, I would expect that the fines and reparations would be higher than mid 400,000s. The lingering question is, why press on giving the stormy weather? The search for Karnan Patera was expected to conclude around 5pm Monday. However, specialist equipment brought up from Auckland allowed the search to continue longer. This helped enable searchers to locate a body, which was successfully recovered late Monday night. Karnan Patera, despite the collective efforts of everyone, couldn't escape nature's cruel grasp. His loss was felt deeply, not just by his family, but for the entire community. In a press conference, Superintendent Tony Hill, struggling to contain his grief, spoke about the day's events and the profound impact it had on everyone involved. And that's all I have for you today, and I appreciate you watching until the end. If you found this story both fascinating and heartbreaking, be sure to show some love to the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stories like this one. I hope to see you at the next one.